Uh, this episode, we're going to be talking top 10 running backs. Uh, this is going to be a consensus ranking based on the different writers on the team. Uh, we had pooled all of the information together, and this is our top 10 list. And number one, not surprising for most people, Christian McCaffrey running back, Carolina Panthers. 20, in 2019, the guy had well over 400 touches. He had 287 carries for 1,387 yards and 15 touchdowns. On top of that, he added 116 catches for another 1,005 yards and four touchdowns. Um, obviously, the conversation is going to be around what does Matt Rule do with him? Um, is he going to see the, the increased amount of work like he's been seeing recently? Is there a curse of 400 touches? If you've been with the Roto Heat community for a while, um, Rick has put out some great articles about the curse of 400 touches for running backs. Uh, is Christian McCaffrey going to be able to, to break that mold? That's a lot of that's a lot of the questions you have to answer this year. Uh, the interesting thing about him is that he's got a good supporting cast around him. You know, they have good receivers. They went into free agency and addressed the quarterback position by getting Teddy Bridgewater. They spent their entire draft on defense to try to help build that defense back up. Um, it's going to be an interesting year for him, and, and we still see him being the best back in fantasy. And number two, again, not surprisingly, because he could be your number one as well, Saquon Barkley running back New York Giants. Now, obviously, 2019 wasn't great for Saquon. There was injuries, and he, and he had some troubles in that area. But he still was able to produce over 1,000 yards on the ground. He had 217 carries for 1,003 yards and six touchdowns. On top of that, he had another 52 catches for 438 yards and another two touchdowns. Um, you'll see a trend with uh, with at least the top five where PPR is going to be big for them because they're getting a lot of reception, you know, with uh, CMC at over 100. Barkley's got over 50. The other guys that are in our top five are all over 50 receptions as well. Uh, that's big in fantasy. Uh, Barkley is continuing to grow and he's still young. You know, he's only going into um, year three and he is very talented. Um, he is a guy that, that he went one overall and he's a first rounder in most startups. He's going to have a big 2020 as long as he stays healthy. That team is continuing to develop and get better. We feel good with him as one of our top backs. At number three, Ezekiel Elliott, running back, Dallas Cowboys. Now, this one, you have to start to, to, to think about this because he has had three of his four professional seasons. He's had over 300 carries. Um, last year, he had just over 300. He had 301 carries. 1,357 yards and 12 touchdowns. On top of that, another 54 receptions for 420 yards and two touchdowns. Now, obviously, Mike McCarthy's come in, bringing a new uh, offense and, and kind of a new take on things, but Zeke is still the centerpiece of that offense. They're still going to run the ball. Um, he's still going to get a ton of action, but, you know, three of his four years have been, he's gotten a lot of usage. Um, obviously he's got the new deal, so he's going to be there for a little while, but you know, you have to, you have to start wondering how many, how many more years is he going to be seeing 300 plus carries and seeing that kind of consistent, um, value, you know, the, the offensive line in front of him is getting, getting weaker and, and they're having to kind of try to fix that up as well. So, you know, there's, there's concerns, but we still see him as a top back. I mean, it's, it's pretty easy to see that with, with Zeke, uh, number four, Alvin Kamara running back, New Orleans Saints. Now, obviously, he's another one like Barkley. 2019 was not great to him. Injuries, um, things like that, that really hurt his 2019. But he still had 171 carries for 797 yards and five touchdowns. On top of that, he had a big amount of catches. He had 81 catches, 533 yards, and another touchdown. The band's back together. One more season. You know, this is kind of the last dance of the Saints, if you will. Uh, they added Emmanuel Sanders. You know, uh, what should be a healthy Kamara. Uh, as long as he stays that way, he'll be back to having, you know, thousand yard season, probably more like the 15 to 1600 yard type season with those receptions and yards there. He's a guy that, that we feel good about. We feel very strong about uh, as, as an RB1. And he's still a guy that you can you can go out and try to get, you know, I've seen the community a little bit all over the place with him. Uh, some are a little nervous that maybe he, you know, he's just not able to handle the kind of work that they were putting him in. Um, he had it down here. It wasn't great for him. 
And, you know, less than 1,000 yards isn't great, but he's still an RB1 for fantasy purposes. Next up, Dalvin Cook, running back, Minnesota Vikings. Um, Cook is one of those that injuries have been huge for him. That's at most of the first couple of years. And even last year, he only played 14 games. But in those 14 games, he had 250 carries, 1,135 yards, 13 touchdowns on the ground, and he added another 53 catches for 519 yards in the air. Um, they're going to have to lean on him a little bit more. You know, they, they obviously got rid of Diggs and, re and replaced him with Justin Jefferson. You know, they got K.J. Osborne, um, Tajay Sharp. You know, they've added some pieces in the offseason, but, you know, Thielen has been down recently. You know, he had not had a great 2019 either. Uh, you know, so that offense may shift to where they're they're trying to lean on the run a little bit more and, and not – airing it out nearly as much. So, you know, we see Cook still seeing uh, top five fantasy running back value, at least in 2020. Um, you know, obviously you have to, you have to keep an eye on the, uh, the contract situation. You know, you've, you've heard rumblings, but nothing's, nothing's true until it's, until it's actually true. Uh, so right now they're just rumblings. Uh, so just keep an eye on it. But if he plays top five easily, uh, next up, Joe Mixon, running back from the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, you know, the interesting thing about Mixon is, is as down as Cincinnati's been, he's had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back rushing seasons. So, you know, even though things haven't been great for him and Cincy, he's still producing. Uh, last year, he had 278 carries, 1,137 yards, five rushing touchdowns. On top of that, he had another 35 catches for 287 yards and three touchdowns through the air. Uh, we all know what happened. Number one overall pick, got Joe Burrow, got T. Higgins. They've added uh, a lot to that team. The defense is going to be better than it was as well. Uh, this team is, you know, uh, we don't want to, we don't want to start crowning teams that are on the rise. You know, we learned that with the Browns, another team in the North there, uh, but they're a team that's moving in the right direction, seemingly bringing in the right kind of talent to turn this thing around. So um, Mixon will be a beneficiary of that. They're going to have to lean on the run to set up the pass and do some of those things to help a rookie quarterback get settled at the NFL level. And Mixon is is the perfect back for that. I mean, he is very good. A three-down type running back. He's got the, a well-rounded skill set. And that, that breeds top 10 running back for fantasy purposes. Next up on the list, Nick Chubb, running back, Cleveland Browns. Uh, you know, <laughs> I know Kareem Hunt's there, and, and the team knows Kareem Hunt's there. But he still produced really well. And his first two seasons at the pro level have been really, really good. And he's one of those guys that that the sky is going to be the limit. Kevin Stefanski is a very good offensive mind. And, and though Hunt's going to be there, you know, we we could see him dealing more in the passing game than the running game. But even so, it's still going to be a good season for Chubb. He's still got plenty, plenty of good RB1 years ahead of him. In 2019, he had 298 carries, 1,494 yards, and eight touchdowns. Then he had another 36 catches for 278 yards through the air. Hunt's there, uh, but there's plenty of work to go around. They've got a really good offense. They've got a lot of different pieces. Can they keep moving it forward in the right direction? And if they are, they're going to need Chubb and Hunt. And the sky's the limit for both these guys. They both have a lot of good value. They both are very talented running backs. And... Chubb is easily still an RB1 for the foreseeable future. Next up, Josh Jacobs, running back, the Las Vegas Raiders. Um, he was a good rookie. You know, he was one of the top rookie picks last year. And there's, there's not much more to say. They didn't bring in a ton of competition that's really going to hurt his value. You know, last year he still had 242 carries for 1150 and seven touchdowns on the ground, as well as, you know, he added a little bit in the passing game, 20 catches for 166 yards, only played in 13 games, uh, but he is a perfect fit for that offense. And, you know, even if he plays 13 to 16, you know, kind of somewhere in that realm, even if he misses a couple with getting banged up a little here and there, you know, he's still going to be good for 1,200 yards, you know, uh, probably closer to 1,500 all-purpose yards. Once you throw in the receiving aspect of it, he's just another year in. Maturity is getting up there. They've added more weapons. Uh, hopefully that passing game will be a little bit more formidable so teams won't have to stack the box so much. And 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 that only shows and breeds success for Josh Jacobs in the long term. Next up, number nine, 
Derrick Henry, running back, Tennessee Titans. Um, this is one that, you know, right now we see him as a top 10, but he could easily slide uh, very quickly too, depending on what they do, um, depending on what they do with him. You know, obviously we know in the third round, they picked up Darrington Evans, um, different type of running back, not the same. Uh, they're look, he's more of a pass catcher type. Uh, and, and we see that with, with Jake or with uh, Henry, because he only had 18 catches last year. They need that pass catching back. He had 18 catches for 206 yards and two touchdowns through the air. He does all his work on the ground. 303 carries, 1,540 yards, and 16 rushing touchdowns. Um, he had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Don't get me wrong, things are going well for Derrick Henry in the last couple of years, but as a fantasy owner, this would be the time to really start saying, what's my team look like? Do I keep Henry on it? Do I start trying to move him? Um, his value is probably not going to get a whole lot higher than it is if it isn't already starting to kind of fluctuate uh, in the in the fantasy community. Um, so he's one of those guys that he's still going to be an RB1 at least this year. Uh, probably could be next year as well, depending on what they're doing uh, and, and how they balance that workload. You know, but uh, he's a ground and pound guy. He's not getting you a lot through the air. So that those PPR numbers are just not going to be there. So that really does cap his value because, you know, at 16 rushing touchdowns, but is he going to have 16 every year? No. You know, he's probably going to come back down to somewhere in the 10 to 12 range, depending on how that, depending on how teams try to stop them. Maybe Evans gets a little more involved and, and that begins to hurt him a little bit there. You have to be concerned either way. Uh, and number 10, rounding out the list, Miles Sanders running back Philadelphia Eagles. Um, this is the consensus ranking. The team really likes what they saw in Sanders. Um, they really liked what they saw coming out of college and as well as his first season in Philly. Uh, he had 179 carries, 818 yards, three rushing touchdowns. On top of that, 50 catches, 509 yards, and three touchdowns. The really interesting fact is I was putting this, you know, compiling all this data and putting this list together. Sanders didn't start getting more than 50% of the snaps until week 11. So he was seeing, you know, for really 40% less of the snaps each week. And he was still producing at a, at a decent level for a rookie running back in a crowded backfield. Um, the only concern is that the, the backfield continues to be crowded there in Philly. And you don't know on a week to week basis kind of what's going on there. Now we expect Sanders to continue to see an increased workload. I expect him to get over a thousand yards rushing this year, as well as his passing. Uh, as well as the passing yards, you know, so you could see him kind of in that um, that 14, 1500 yards, all purpose yards uh, and probably closer to 10 total touchdowns. You know, he only had six. So you're going to see that increase in fantasy value this year. Uh, definitely a guy that's on the rise, a young player that's super talented. Uh, continue to check out rotoheat.com for all of our 2020 dynasty outlooks. So you can see what we think about all the guys that are going into 2020. Keep it locked in here. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notification so you can stay up to date with all the content over here on YouTube. Go and let us know in the comments what you think about our top 10. Is there somebody else that you have in here? Is there somebody that you like better or somebody that you think we shouldn't have in here? Well, let's have a conversation about it. Until next time, this is Brad from rotoheat.com. Don't forget. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any more fantasy football content from the rotoheat.com team.